What is going on everyone, I'm Adriano and this video is a guide on how to write unit tests for our AWS Glue PySpark jobs. In one of my last videos, I walked through how we can configure AWS Glue locally with PyCharm with Docker. So building upon that video, this tutorial is how we can write and run unit tests using the PyTest Python library to test some of our transformation logic. By following this tutorial, we'll be able to test some of our Python functions that perform transformations within our AWS Glue job locally before we deploy the entire job to the AWS Glue service. Now, unit testing our code brings many benefits, but to name a few, this will help ensure the correctness and reliability of our ETL functions and make it easier to locate and fix issues even in complex ETL pipelines. So the script I'm about to show you is a simple glue job that I've developed, which takes one of my customer data sets, which is in my data lake in AWS S3, and performs two data transformations on my data set, which includes filtering my data set based on males and making the first name column have all lower cases. So in this tutorial, I'll show you two unit tests I built to ensure my filter function and lowercase transformation functions are doing exactly what I expect. All right, so this is the AWS glue script we're going to be writing unit tests for. The script is made up of multiple Python functions, which are calling the Spark and the AWS Glue API to read, transform, and write our data. I've tried to implement clean coding principles by keeping the functions small and mainly doing one thing. By keeping them in functions, this allows me to develop unit tests to make sure they're doing exactly what they're intended to do. Now, I've seen a lot of AWS Glue jobs that involve no functions or classes, and unfortunately, if you develop your jobs like this, it's going to be very difficult to do unit tests on them. So to quickly walk you through what this job is doing here, we're first have a function that will create our Spark and Glue context. So this is the entry point into the Spark and Glue API. Our next function is going to be reading our customer data from AWS S3 and return a dynamic frame. The next function here is a filter function. So it's going to take a value from one column and then filter out the value. So I'm using the filter method on one of our columns. So I didn't hard code any values to make it dynamic. And this is important so I can test it later on. The next function here is going to be taking our dynamic frame and creating a PySpark data frame. So this allows us to perform additional PySpark transformations that don't come out of the box with the AWS Glue API. So for example, in the next function here, I can perform the with column method that allows me to do a number of transformations, but I'm using the lower function here, which allows me to convert the value of one of my columns to be lowercase. And then finally, my last function is to write out the transform data back to AWS S3, and it's going to be storing it as a parquet data set. And then the last function is just my main function, which is going to be calling all the functions that I developed above and might have additional parameters that I might want to pass into it. So here, for example, I've added my output path. And then the last two lines of code here at the very bottom of the script is just going to be calling the main function if we are running this script directly. So I wrote this AWS glue job locally and was able to run this in a Docker container. So in my last video, I walked through how to set that up. But just to show you the, some of the parameters I've set up in PyCharm here, if we go to edit, edit configuration of our script, and I've already went ahead to set up all the parameters I need to run the script locally. Now, if you're curious on how to actually set this up with PyCharm, I have a video on that, and I'll include that in the link in the description below. All right, so for the two Python functions we're gonna develop unit tests for, it's gonna be this filter column from dynamic frame and the lowercase value. So I wanna be able to write unit tests to test to make sure that they're doing exactly what they, I've intended them to do. So I've created a new script in my test folder, which is in the same project as where I have this glue script. So the first step is to import libraries that we need to do this. So I'm gonna be developing these unit tests in the PyTest framework. So we're gonna to have to import PyTest. Now you're also gonna to have to import some additional libraries or functions that will be able to create some temporary data that you might need. I've also imported the Spark context and Glue context in order to initiate my Spark session in my unit tests. All right, so the first fixture that we're going to create here is going to be the Spark session. So I've set the scope to be a session, and what this is doing is creating a PySpark session, so we're not using the one from the other script. 
And by setting the scope to session, this allows us to share this across all our test modules and test classes within the entire test session. So we don't want to create a separate Spark session for every single unit test. So it's where I found that setting it to session was a helpful parameter to add here. Right, so in order to test our filtering and lowercase column functions, we're going to need some sample data. Now, you could have some sample data from a file and store that in S3, but I wanted to create some sample data that I could have in this script here. So what I did is we've created a PySpark fixture and I called it a, a sample data frame data set. So I've just made three records, which is just some sample data, trying to emulate the data that I'm going to be transforming in my data lake. So this is going to create a, a Spark data frame when this function runs. I've also created a second fixture, which is another sample data set. And this time it's a dynamic frame data set. So this is going to emulate a data set when you read from the glue catalog or read your data directly into AWS S3 into a glue job. So what I've done here is I first created the data set within the Spark API. And then from that, I've used the from data frame method to convert it into a dynamic frame. So as a time of making this video, there wasn't just a method within the glue API that I can create my own data set, the least that I'm aware of. So the approach I've taken is just create the sample data set using the Spark API and then converting it into a dynamic frame. Great. So now that we have our two data sets, we can go ahead and develop our unit test. So the next thing we're going to do is create our unit test here. I'm going to call it test lowercase. Now it's important that your unit test functions start with the word test. If it doesn't, the PyTest framework won't recognize it as a unit test. All right, so to walk you through the code of this test, as you see, we have a couple assert statements, but the first line of code is going to be calling the function from the transform customer table. So if we go to the very top of the screen here, we can see that we're importing that function from my script, which is within my project. So now that we're calling the function, the first parameter it takes, it's going to be the data set that we want to perform the transformation on. And you can see here what we're passing in is the data set that we've created above. So this is going to be the first sample data set that I've created here. So you can see that name is matching the function name in the PyTest fixture. So now that we're calling that function here, second parameter is going to be the name of the column that we want to make all lower cases. And in this case, I'm going to test the first name column in my data set, which you can see here is going to be this first column of the data set. So I've intentionally made it all uppercase. And what we're going to be doing is testing to make sure. So here first, I'm asserting to make sure that we have three records in it. And the second set of asserts is making sure that from all three records that the names are all going to be lowercase. So see, we've started with the names being all uppercase and I'm expecting. So a search should say, hey, these names should be John as a lowercase instead of John as a capital. All right, so the second unit test we're going to write is going to be called test filter gender. So what I'm going to be doing is testing to make sure that function we've developed in our other script and make sure that only values are coming back with the gender male. So in the first line of our function, all it's going to be doing is calling that filter column from dynamic frame, which can be seen here on line 36 of my code. And what we're doing is passing that dynamic frame we've created on line 36. And the first parameter of this function is we want to filter based on the value of male. And this is going to be the column that we want to apply our filter on. And it's going to be the gender column. So if we go up to the top here, you can see that the third column of our dynamic frame is going to be gender. And you can see I have one male row and then two female rows. So for this to work, I should only be getting one row back. All right, let's go ahead and run our unit tests to make sure that the functions are doing exactly what we think they're doing. So in PyCharm, I've already went ahead to configure my unit tests. So what I've done just to show you the configuration here is I've added the configuration as a PyTest and I've pointed to that test script, the location. And what you want to do is if you're running this in PyCharm, you want to make sure you're using the Python interpreter that you've set up that has Docker installed, which has your version of glue. So here in the Python interpreter, I'm passing it to 
the Docker image, which has glue 4.0. And you want to make sure you're passing the same parameters for the Docker container settings. So just to show you here what I've passed, I've passed my host path, which is my local machine. And I've passed the container path, which is on the Docker image, which has the project as well as my credentials. And under PyTest, it recognizes some additional settings. I can run this on a specific module, but I've just passed the entire script path. So we're running it on the entire script. So this will allow me to test it on both of my unit tests that I've developed. All right, so let's just go ahead and give this a run. So now my pie tests are going to be running in the Docker image. And here we've seen that we've successfully run both our tests. We get a message saying that both tests have passed. So I just want to show you what would happen if our test failed. So I'm going to make the second assert statement equal to J having an uppercase instead. And now if we run this. What we see is that one of our tests have failed, but the other one passed. So now it's showing us in our console here that on line 55, we were expecting John to be uppercase. However, it is coming in as lowercase. Great, I'm just going to set that back to be lowercase as expected. So there you go. I hope this video has been helpful on how to write and run unit tests that will work with your PyTest code for AWS glue jobs. We created some sample data sets within our test script and have been able to run our transformations on our sample data to make sure our transformation functions are doing exactly what we expect. I'll share a link to this code on my GitHub repo and include a link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video or learned something, please hit that like button. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing for more videos on working with data on AWS. Thanks again and see you next time.